Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Nathan sent me a note about something here in Michigan. It says, Steve, check this story out. And if you could, please go a little bit deeper into the law behind something like this. Because I always enjoy those videos where we talk about the law and so on. So here's what we're going to talk about. And other states have been doing this for some time now. Michigan is just going to start doing this. Michigan getting its first restricted high occupancy vehicle lanes, HOV lanes. WJRT, which is Channel 12 out of Flint, I've had friends who work there, uh, ran the story written by Ryan Jeltema. And uh, here's the thing. I lived in California, went to law school out there, and they had, quote-unquote, carpool lanes. And they call them different things in different states, and for all I know, that's not even the official name in California. But HOV is High Occupancy Vehicle Lanes, and the thinking is that they want to encourage people to uh, get together in how they drive places and get fewer vehicles in a road with more people in them. That's the thinking. That's the thinking. So to encourage that, they're going to have lanes where they say, okay, there's regular lanes for traffic, and then if you're in a vehicle with more than one person in it, then you can drive in the HOV lane if you want to. And so when you're stuck in traffic next time, there's an open lane right there, and every now and then you see someone go flying by who's got people in their car, you're going to go, wait a second. If I had people in my car, I could be doing that too. So Newly built freeway lanes in Michigan can be designated for use only by high occupancy vehicles for the first time under new bills signed into law yesterday. The governor signed House Bills 4352 and 4353 into law, which allow the Michigan Department of Transportation to permit only vehicles with multiple people inside to use one lane of certain freeways. Now, it's coming to a very small section of the roadways at first, but we'll see if it creeps into other places. Drivers who are alone in their vehicle could face a ticket if they drive in that restricted HOV lane by themselves. MDOT director said the high occupancy vehicle lanes will encourage more carpooling and ease traffic congestion. HOV lanes are common elsewhere in the U.S., but Michigan does not have any as of now. These bills represent a major step forward for mobility in Michigan and efforts to decrease emissions by encouraging people to share rides. The first HOV lane in Michigan will be designated along I-75 between 12 Mile Road and South Boulevard in Oakland County. It's not far from where I grew up. An additional HOV travel lane is being constructed between 8 Mile and 12 Mile Roads, I believe also on I-75. A state rep from that area said, I'm proud that the HOV lanes will be an effective tool for reducing traffic and pollution on I-75, where it runs through the heart of my district. Only freeways built using federal funding will be eligible to receive high occupancy lanes. Motor vehicles, buses, law enforcement agencies, and other vehicles approved by MDOT will be exempt from the restrictions. So motorcycles can go through the HOV lanes all day long with a solo rider. Likewise, so can buses and uh, law enforcement vehicles, etc., With these bills, our state not only furthers its efforts toward more efficient mobility and lower carbon emissions, but it also fully leverages federal infrastructure funding for Michigan, said uh, the rep from Sterling Heights. I'm proud of Michigan's infrastructure progress as we adapt to a greener future while continuing to repair and rebuild roads and bridges at historic rates. So I went and pulled The bills 4352 and 4353, which were signed into law, like I said, just the other day. And uh, you read these, and uh, it's just pages of gibberish, (laughs) which is what most statutes look like. (laughs) Because they didn't just pass a bill that says HOV lanes can now exist. What they did is they went in and they rewrote the sections of the Motor Vehicle Code, which is uh, at MCL 257 at SEC in the blue books behind me, for instance. And they redefined lane usage because lanes are in the roads and there's laws defining how you use a lane. So for instance, if a roadway is divided into two or more clearly marked lanes for traffic, the following rules, in addition to all other rules, with a sec, will apply. And then it says a vehicle must be driven as nearly as practically entirely within a single lane and must not be moved from the lane until the operator has first ascertained that the movement can be safely made. So you can't change lanes without making sure it's safe to do so, and so on. And so it talks about all these different things that you can do in the lane, what you can't do in the lane, what the lanes are for. 
And then at the very end, it does then add, and I suspect this is the primary new section, if a lane is designated as an HOV lane by an agency with jurisdiction over the roadway and is appropriately marked with traffic control devices, the lane must be reserved during the periods indicated for the exclusive use of buses and HOVs. The restrictions imposed do not apply to an authorized emergency vehicle, law enforcement, bus, or motorcycle. And so we're talking about the HOV lane. Now you go, wait a second, a lane designated as an HOV lane. And interestingly, what, what is an HOV? Well, you have to then go find, is HOV defined in the statute? And it is. So at the front end of the Motor Vehicle Code, it defines all kinds of things, like what an automobile is, what a car is, what a road is. you got to do these things. People will argue about anything, trust me, especially lawyers and people in court. So HOV is defined at MCL 257.20B or 20B, High Occupancy Vehicle, or HOV, defined. A high occupancy vehicle, or HOV, means any motor vehicle carrying no fewer than two occupants, including the driver of the vehicle. So you're driving by yourself, that's one person. You're driving with your kid, that's two. You're driving with your friend, that's two. You're driving with uh, someone who just jumped in your car, that's two. Okay, so you count yourself, you have one more. And I suspect that they've done the math on this, and that if you were to take a look at most cars in morning and afternoon rush hour, most cars have got one person in them. So anytime they can simply encourage people to get together and, and get into somebody else's car, you're eliminating cars from the roadway. It's not always going to work that way, but it will work that way quite a bit. But Nathan pointed out, and he is 100% correct on this. He goes, Steve, I got no problem with the concept. Okay? But he goes, enforcement. Enforcement. He goes, so I'm driving in the HOV lane, and I got a kid in the back seat. And I go by a police officer who's watching that lane, and they see me in the front seat. They don't see my kid in the back seat. Am I going to get pulled over? It's a good chance you will. Officer's going to walk up and go, do you know why I pulled you over? No, I have no idea. Oh, you got a kid in the back seat? Never mind. But you and I both know. They pull you over. They're going to want to talk for a few minutes, maybe see your paperwork and so on, right? So no one wants to get pulled over for no reason. And I've seen vehicles on the road now where they've got the tinted glass from the sides going all the way back, and you can't see inside them and know what's in the car. I was literally talking to somebody last week, and they pulled up. I was talking to them for a few minutes. They'd gotten out of their car, and she said, well, I got to go. My kid's in the car. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't even see the child in the car. And the child was in a seat in the back, buckled in properly and legally, and it wasn't like it was a hot day or a hot car or anything like that. But she stepped out to talk to me, and then she said, well, I, gotta, and the, I did not know the child was there. And I looked, and I could barely see. And the only way I could see the child was if I looked between the B pillar and the seat, and I could see the seat in there. But if you walked by the outside of the car, I don't think you could see it. So she was driving through an HOV lane. A cop would go, oh, there's somebody driving by herself. That's going to be a problem. But there's also one other thing, and I have to just say this as an observation. So this is an anecdote. This is just a story based on my own personal experience. I lived in Los Angeles for two years, went to law school out there, and I lived inland a little ways, and I had to drive to school and drive back every single weekday that school was in session for about two years. And there were carpool lanes out there. And you'd be stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, in the regular stuff, because there's nobody who lived near me who wanted the carpool. And uh, you'd see this empty carpool lane. And every 10 minutes, somebody would go by. Almost no one using it. Almost no one using it. There are times where I think if people could carpool, they would. So when I was in school as a child, I was in a carpool with some of my neighborhood classmates. And my, and my mom and their other moms took turns. And so my mom would drive us all one day, and the next day, Rob's mom would drive us all. And after that, next day, Mark's mom would drive us all. And that, of course, is something we could do because we're all going to the same place. We all live in the same area and, and completely convenient. But, you know, if you're an attorney and you're going to work today, unless somebody lives near you who's going to your work today, you might not be able to carpool with them. And by the way, what if you're going to court this afternoon? 
Are you then going to go back to the office and pick these people up and take them? So I'm not sure how successful these things are. I'm not against them on any kind of principle or anything like that. I think it's a good idea. But I'm wondering how effective they're going to be and how many people are going to get pulled over who've got someone else in the car with them. So that's what's going to happen. But it looks like they're doing it right now in the two stretches on I-75 down there at the north end of Wayne County going into Oakland County and then up in Oakland County itself. And so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I drive through there from time to time, almost always by myself. (laughs) One is the loneliest number. So we'll see what happens with Nathan. Thanks for sending it. And like I said, if you want to look this law up, you actually have got to look in a couple different places and including the definition of high occupancy vehicle. And it's literally just, you got someone in your car with you, you're good to go. So Michigan getting its first restricted high occupancy vehicle lanes. Ryan Jeltman wrote that for WJRT TV 12 out of Flint. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Life is pain, so live it up while you can.